You've been part of several efforts lately, including one to get the presidential candidates to hold a debate focused solely on D.C. issues. How would you explain the inability of voting rights supporters to gain any traction on the national level, and what, do you think, what purpose do you think this debate would serve? Well, first, and uh, Mayor Vincent Gray supports it, along with many other organizations who signed that letter recently to the presidential candidates. Uh, the idea is to have a presidential debate in the District of Columbia on District of Columbia issues, issues like statehood, budget autonomy, rampant poverty, lack of adequate public services, etc. And there's never been a presidential debate in the nation's capital. The Presidential Debate Commission is nothing more than a corporation created by the two major parties to get rid of the League of Women Voters sponsorship of the presidential debates in 1987. So I think we'll get some uh, affirmatives from some of the third parties, uh, but we haven't heard from either the Republican or Democratic Party. Mr. Nader, Tom Sherwood from Channel 4 News. Why, why would you even expect... Uh, the presidential candidates of the two major parties to take the time where they have to fight over these three debates that they are going to have to do something about the District of Columbia. I don't, I don't even know where this idea would take hold in the national political consciousness that this would be something good to do, given all the world issues and the national issues. This is important. And I live in the district, but I just, I just, I just find this almost unthinkably not going to happen. Well, it's a good time you have lower expectations than you should have, <laughs> because this is a colony. There's no uh, uh, capital district in the Western world that strips its people of the right to vote for members of parliament, I, in this case, uh, the uh, members in Congress. I understand uh, the history. I just don't understand how this could have any traction whatsoever. Well, it's all a matter of determination. I remember in our history, abolition of slavery didn't have much traction at one time, too. Women's right to vote didn't have much traction. The arguments uh, for self-determination by the District of Columbia is overwhelming. And we don't have to go through it because they've been talked about on Kojo's program for a long time. Yeah, well, let's talk about how we get traction, Ralph Nader. We spoke to the NAACP's Ben Jealous a few weeks ago on this show. He said D.C. supporters need to be a little more militant about their cause. Would you agree, or do you think things like a limited strike where people show up late to work are as far as supporters should go? No, they need to be more organized. Uh, obviously, if you had a poll in the district come beyond statehood, uh, you know, you would probably win the poll. But they're not organized. It's the same four or five hundred people, stalwarts, who are pushing for something like this, and uh, and not much more. Uh, so, because they have low expectation levels, they think Congress has always dominated the district, and it was it isn't going to change. A lot of people think it's a, it requires a constitutional convention. Uh, constitutional amendment, which is very onerous, obviously. But now, when it comes to statehood, other other territories have been uh, turned into states by simple legislation in Congress, and that's the only way we're going to we're going to get non-reversible uh, voting re re representation, control over D.C. laws by D.C. people, D.C. budgets by D.C. people, control over the courts and, and the judges and, and district attorney, like any other state. 